years now, some companies are now moving to the next country that's got lower wages than China, because China's economy is starting to grow. There's always going to be some country out there with lower wages, but we can out-educate anybody. And we used to have, we used to have the best education system in the world. We used to have the number one percentage of college graduates in the world. We don't anymore. Our kids used to do the best on math and science exams. Now we're like ninth, 12th, 21st. And that means that, you know, other countries are going to pass us by. This is why, even in these tough budget times, where we need to cut the things that we don't need, we can't stop investing in education. We can't stop investing in education. I, I, uh, I put forward my budget proposal for next year, and almost every department I cut. One, de one department I didn't cut, Education. I did not cut education, I actually increased our investment in education. Now, money is not the only thing that makes a good school. So we've also got to reform our schools. Some schools are not structured to make sure kids learn. There are, there are schools out there where they've got enough money, but you know, for whatever reason, part, most of the time they're in poor neighborhoods. But part of it is also that the teachers, the principals, et cetera, they're not working together in as effective a way with the parents and the community to make sure that there are high expectations for the kids and everybody's performing. So what we've said is, yes, we're going to put more money in the schools, but we're also going to reform the schools. And part of the money that we've done is, what we've done is we've carved out some of this money. And we said, instead of it just going to every school district based on some formula, we want you to compete for it. Come up with a plan explaining how you're going to reform our education system, how you're going to make sure there are high standards for every kid, how you're going to get the best teachers, how you're going to train and retain those teachers, how you're going to make sure that the schools are accountable. And if you do those things, we're going to give you a little bit of extra money. And it gives an incentive for every state and every school district to start looking at what they're doing to see if they're using the best practices possible to educate our kids. So that's on the, the K through 12 level. We also have to focus on community colleges. Because that's, it's not just enough to have kids getting good educations. We have to have adults who are constantly retraining. I mean, how, how, many, how, many, here fo how many folks here who are working at Gamesa uh, took some sort of training class at a community college that helped them uh, along the way. Anybody? Look at that, right? So you, we've got a, a decent number of folks who maybe you've got a career change, maybe you know your old skills are a little obsolete now and you need to upgrade them. Well, you've got to be able to also get a good education. So that's why we're putting more money into community colleges as well as four-year colleges. And what we've done is we've expanded the the grant programs, the Pell Grant, the student loan programs, so that more people can afford to go to college without getting huge debt. Especially if you're working, you know, and if you've already got a family, you can't afford to be taking out, you know, fifteen thousand dollars worth of debt. So we want to give you more help now. Th this is a good place to just talk again about this budget debate because you're going to be hearing a lot about this. Right now, we're debating last year's budget. We may have a government shutdown. Then we're going to have to debate next year's budget. All of us think that the government should live within its means. We all believe that. You do it in your families. Government should have to do the same thing. And there is some waste in government. And so we've been cutting in a whole bunch of areas, and we're consolidating some agencies and you know earmarks that are not necessary. And we're looking at the Pentagon. How do we make our defense spending smarter and better? And so we're going to be doing a lot of consolidation and cuts. But one thing we can't do is stop investing in education, in research, in infrastructure, in things like a smart grid. Those are the things that are going to make us competitive over the long term. 
So if you see me get in, in some arguments in Washington, I want you to be clear. Don't, don't believe that somehow uh, that the arguments about whether we should cut or not, I've already said we've got to cut spending. I just want to make sure we're cutting the right things. Don't protect things we don't need and get rid of things that we do. That's my basic attitude. All right. I have time for one more question, and I'll call on that young lady back there. Mr. President, given that energy efficiency is the cleanest, safest, cheapest, and most labor-intensive energy resource. What else, what more can the federal government do that is revenue neutral to support the growth of the energy efficiency industry? Well, first of all, I want you to know that uh, you are absolutely right. The, the first thing we can do to improve our economy and our environment at the same time, and can actually produce a lot of jobs, is to make everything we do more efficient. That's sort of the low-hanging fruit. We use huge amounts of energy because our buildings aren't well insulated, or the lighting that we use is uh, out uh, old-fashioned, uh, or the, the heating and uh, the HVAC systems, the, the heating and cooling systems are inefficient. So what, what we've said is, um, why not provide incentives to both businesses and homeowners to make your home or your business more energy efficient? Because you'll get the money back. It'll pay for itself because your electricity bills will go down. But the only problem is a lot of folks, they need a little bit of money up front to get started. I mean, I'll bet a lot of folks, anybody recently, re-insulated their house or put in new windows or something? Gentleman right here. And, and how long ago did you do it? A few months ago? Are you already seeing a drop in your electricity bill? You are, right? So, but you had that, those upfront costs that you had to deal with. Right, and so the question is, you may not have initially a couple thousand bucks out of pocket to be able to do it. Now, this guy looks like he's pretty handy, so he might have done it himself, right? But, you know, I would have, you know, gotten a nail in my thumb or something because uh, I, cause I, you know, uh, I'm challenged in those ways. So I might have had to hire somebody. Uh, but the point, though, is, is that that money up front, if we can give you a tax break to do it initially, you're going to get that money back. And... If you're not somebody who can do it yourself, you're going to hire somebody. And that now is creating a job in a whole bunch of new industries for people who are doing energy efficiency. 